What is going on everybody? Want to go ahead and start the video off by saying happy Thanksgiving to everybody out there. Hope you guys have a great day with family and friends. Also, thank you so much for supporting me, watching these videos. I really do have a lot of fun making them and if I can just help one person out uh, by doing what I do, then that pretty much makes it all worth it for me. And so it, it really is a lot of fun and I just wanted to go ahead and start the video off by saying thank you for that. But Getting into the video, so top three meta offenses as of right now, in my opinion, 100% my opinion, very subjective list, so definitely not saying none of these are disputable or arguable, uh, but I'm going to start at the top, number one, go down to number three, and you see me already in uh, the gun bunch formation out of the West Coast playbook, and you see me running mesh post. Now, if you watched the Philly Challenger event at all, Ghost ended up winning that event, and mesh post was basically his main play that he ran almost the entire tournament and a lot of people had a lot of trouble trying to stop it and really the core concept of this play and a lot of the plays that you'll see this year that are pretty popular it's a lot of high low reads this essentially if you guys know corner strike think of corner strike I mean corner strike's been around for a long time now what does corner strike do it, it looks to isolate a flat zone defender on the sideline either to the left or right side, whichever side, I mean, it has options going both ways, but it isolates, it wants to isolate one defender and high-low him. If he goes high, you throw the flat. If he goes low, you throw the corner. This is exactly the same thing as corner strike, except for now it's over the middle of the field. You're high-lowing, in this case, that defender, and this play works for several reasons. So this looks like it's a pretty standard cover two shell, right? But the reason this play is very effective is this cloud flat on the outside here, you see this cloud flat out here just sitting there because he has nobody to guard. You see how deep that cloud flat is? He's almost at the 10-yard line. I snapped the ball at about the 30. So he's about 20 yards downfield. He gets pulled downfield by not only the streak but also the motioned out post route. And so ideally, I could actually hit either one of these routes. I could hit the drag right now and have a lot of space to work with to turn up field. Or I could stay patient in the pocket, hit the post route over the middle of the field. And that post route is really what's problematic right there as Teddy kind of sails that throw, but he was wide open. That post route reminds me of the PA post shot route out of gun tight flex from last year where it's very tough to defend. And I haven't seen really a route or a zone rather defend that route consistently as of yet. Right there, you see it does a great job of beating man to man coverage. Also, this play very simple to set up out of the huddle. All you do is max protect and then streak that right up screen receiver and that's it. So you have three routes out on the field and then you just motion out the, the post route and that's the setup. And so that play can be very, very difficult to stop for your opponent. Now also you have to worry about corner strike. Also getting into it, if you can set your audibles, if you're in a tournament or if you're playing regs, whatever, if you can set your audibles, these would be the audibles I would set. So you have corner strike, HP mid draw, dig HB out, PA slot post, which is PA post, and then you come out and mesh post. So that those are kind of your five core plays. If you can't set your audibles, then you won't be able to do this. However, the West Coast playbook does have corner strike as an audible. So corner strike and the mid draw are both quick audibles at, by default. So you'll be able to come out and either, you know, dig HB out, PA slot post, or mesh post, and still have access to corner strike and mid draw, which is already really, really good having access to corner strike as a quick audible. Uh, out of gun bunch that's really good so getting into corner strike I like to run it I'd say the same way as like skimbo likes to run it so basically all you do you take that table route you put him on a swing to the outside and just feels better he kind of gets up field a little better in my opinion the table route just the angle feels a little funky this year and I think the swing route just feels cleaner so I like that setup you could also go you know with uh, right here man-to-man -man coverage if you stay patient in the pocket and if, say, your opponent realizes it's corner strike, shoots out to the gap uh, to use a corner route, you have that in route over the middle. But corner strike, very simple. You know, it's, it's another high-low like I talked about with mesh post. All you do is high-low this outside defender. He's sinking back to guard the corner route. You hit the flat underneath. He bites down hard on the flat. You hit the corner route behind him. Very, very simple. You have the read to both sides, not only with the C route and the running back out the backfield, but also the tight end and the other receiver on the corner route on the back side. Uh, and so it's just a very safe, very easy to replay right here. You see HB draw, you can mix it up different motions. You can motion not at all. You can quick snap it, whatever. Pretty reliable run play right there. Just wanted to showcase it one time 
right here this is the play that is unique to the west coast playbook dig hb out and you see that z spot post on the backside there and you know that's kind of the play that i think is making everybody kind of gravitate to this west coast playbook among other things but it's a big big factor and the way you see i'm setting it up right now essentially uh, all you're going to do is max protect, streak that A receiver, and then put the outside B receiver on a hitch route. And you see what that gives you the option to do. That A route, once again, clearing out. So similar concept to the mesh post. A route clearing out for a post route to come in underneath it. And then underneath with that B receiver, you put him on a hitch. You have him not only as a quick read over the middle. If he's wide open, you can go ahead and throw it. But also you can playmaker him to the inside or to the outside. So you're playing, once again, a high-low. A lot of the times you'll, you'll playmaker him to the inside. And so what that'll do is when he cuts inside, that makes basically like this defender right here have a decision to make. Either he has to bite down on the playmaker, and a lot of times a user defender, a lot of users, as soon as they see a playmaker, it just attracts their attention. Even if it takes their attention off of what they're doing for a quarter of a second, it can that can make the difference for you to be able to fit in that post route behind it. So very important route right there. Playmaker underneath, you put that defender into a high-low. Uh, these two defenders, this defender and this defender, both get drawn deep with you know that streak route going down the field, and then you have this route right here coming in underneath it. So that's basically the main idea of this setup right there. Playmaker to the outside, and Teddy once again seals the throw over Diggs's head. But you guys can see the concept in that he was indeed wide open right here once again. Man-to-man -man coverage, going to playmaker over the middle, and Stephon Diggs beats his man uh, with that 91-plus route running. That's also a nice thing to have on that post route on the backside, get that route over the middle much quicker. Another setup, you can toy with the setups right here, leave the running back on his route, motion out a drag route, and kind of do a high-low on the outside there oh, with the running back and the cloud flat sinking back trying to guard the, the deep post route right here. Once again, you can do something like a dual drag setup with you know the A receiver Treadwell still on that, that clear out route to get that those zones out of there. Basically, whatever you want to do, that's kind of the main concept of that play, though, clear out for that deep post. Uh, you can toy with the underneath routes. Now, PA slot post, uh, the main way you're going to see a lot of people running this is with the dual drags and essentially uh, with that motion route over, the, the motion drag over rather. And so all you want to do right here is it's another high-low on the backside with the tight end dragging underneath and then the C route coming in behind it. And so uh, right here in this case, they actually don't even have a flat defender out there, but hypothetically say this man was in a flat zone, you'd be high-lowing him. He's in a hard flat. You throw the C route, cloud flat or soft squat, you know, you throw the drag underneath and then you have, you know, the backside post route over the middle and then another dragger underneath. And that also creates a high-low on, say, someone like this defender, where if he sinks back, you hit the drag, he bites down super hard, you can throw that post route. So right there, you go ahead, hit the drag to Rudolph, turn up field, and get eight or nine yards. Um, another way you can set up this play that Skimbo liked to run it a lot was basically max protect and just drag the outside receiver. So you get the high-low on the left and then the backside deep post where you can see right there you can fit that in a lot of times. You have to be careful, though. Uh, any defender with over 91 zone coverage you know, can make that throw very sketchy. So if you're playing regs, you're playing against a team like the Seahawks or the Vikings, you got to know where Earl Thomas or Harrison Smith is at on the field. If he's in that deep middle third, you're not going to be able to throw that route. So definitely be be mindful of where your opponent's, you know, 91 plus zone defenders are. If you're playing salary cap or mutt, they probably have them all over the field right here. Another play I wanted to touch on was this mesh play. And you notice that corner route gets out there very, very deep. So it's similar to like curl flat out of this gun bunch. And you can see here that in this case, it looks like some kind of maybe man-to-man -man match zone coverage right there. So go ahead, hit the playmaker up the field. But I want to touch on how deep, you know, that uh, that corner route goes. It's a lot deeper than like a corner strike corner. And so basically, if you guys watched the Vegas tournament over the past weekend, IB Strafing was actually running this play a good bit. And this corner route was looking pretty successful for him as you see here it just gets very deep you know even a cloud flat it's going to get behind it and you can angle that pass towards the sideline here and so you get behind basically any type of cloud flat or curl flat or whatever that defender might be in and you can hit this little pocket right there with a nice little pass and so uh, that's what you're going to see is pretty effective out of that play right there you get a rat catch defender dives misses and you score a touchdown so that play is also a nice little play 
in that, you know, five, six play arsenal out of that gun bunch week from uh, the shotgun bunch week out of the West Coast playbook. Now, number two, single back doubles north also out of the West Coast playbook. Now, I deliberated between this one going to number two or number three. I ultimately put it at number two because of the fact not only do you have this doubles north in the West Coast playbook, but also scheme-wise, you can go to the gun bunch, also has the same personnel. So if you're in a setting where you can set audibles and, you know, have basically all the greatest plays out of this playbook at your disposal makes it super super tough to stop if you guys watched either the philly tournament or the vegas tournament and saw mr moss play at all he ran a very very good and clean single back doubles north that was giving a lot of people problems and he was actually using it as a run first formation as you see right here with this hb pitch that if you guys have played online at all or watched any tournaments i'm sure you've seen the single back tight slots hb pitch and it's literally the same exact play right there you see guard gets out there super quick actually out random so pick up eight or nine yards uh, this is a play that gives people a lot of fits and a lot of people like to motion over that wide receiver over to the left kind of like you do out of single back tight doubles to get those three receivers out there guard kicks out there and you can get a lot of uh, running room with the numbers game you can also run this play to the right side and so uh, it's not quite as effective in my opinion but right there actually uh, I got the blocks and made a couple guys miss and got into the end zone, but usually you see that run uh, going to the left side, to the double receiver side of the formation. Now, another run out of this formation is the HBA's power, which is a nice complement, essentially a power row, just a single back power row. Nice complement to go basically up the middle if they're, you know, spreading their line, spreading linebackers, doing whatever base aligning to try and stop that pitch play. You can hit them up the middle just to kind of keep them honest. Now, that's kind of the one-two punch on the ground. Through the air, you have several options right here. Wide receiver corner. This was something that Mr. Moss was running uh, a, a little bit, kind of as a mix-up. So you motion over. You want to keep with that same motion to keep the play looking the same. And then right there, you kind of go with the backside flood uh, to try and you know free up either the drag route or you motion over the C route, and he acts as basically a pseudo post type of deal. Now, another play you can run out of this is slot corner. And essentially, what you can end up getting out of the setup is, if you see right here, this setup looks a lot like, you know, Ghost's mesh post setup out of Gun Bunch Week. So you have the clear out route from Treadwell, the post route over the middle from Thielen, and then I put Diggs on an in route over the middle just to kind of make the mesh point a little better. A drag route is a little too quick, and a slant kind of gets a little too deep for my liking. So I go with the in route from Stefan Diggs on the left side there. And what you're going to see is a very similar high-low situation coming in. So motion and Thielen for a step to kind of make the motion look the same. And you see, once again, the mesh point pretty good. And you're just high-lowing them at this point. Go ahead, roll it, and hit Thielen over the middle. Teddy makes a good throw this time. And that's essentially what you're looking for out of that play. Uh, you can also run it to the left side. Um, I'm going to show you guys in a minute. There's another setup, kind of just a backside flood. Right here, once again, go ahead, hit the in route to digs against the man-to-man -man coverage, especially if you have a guy with 91 or more route running like Stephon Diggs can run that in route uh, very crisply. And then right here, if you go ahead and look uh, on the back side, or actually it's going to be the next play right here. Once again, a Thielen over the middle on the post route ends up getting open against man-to-man -man coverage right here on the back side here. So if you look at this corner route, the corner route's pretty shallow. So what I like to do if I run this setup is go ahead, smart route the corner route, make him a little deeper, just like that. And then essentially you're going for a backside flood. So I'm going to go ahead, streak Stefan Diggs, and you're looking for essentially a weak side flood coming from the opposite side of the field. So Rudolph dragging Treadwell on the corner, Diggs on the clear out, and then you have a backside post from Adam Thielen coming over the middle of the field. And it's just kind of a make a read type of deal. I usually go drag to corner to backside post that's kind of my progression so right there go ahead and hit the drag uh, to Kyle Rudolph so that's kind of your passing game out of that single back doubles north now number three I went with the single back deuce close now I don't really run deuce close at all um, if you guys watch the tournaments you guys probably saw guys like Mo, Kerry Q um, if you guys watch the Philly tournament Fitzmagic made final four basically running HB Wham every play and I think that's definitely the cornerstone of this formation is that HB Wham and how effective the blocking is and just how much the defense really has to sell out to consistently stop that play. And when you have the defense doing what you want to do, you want them to do and dictating what they have to do to stop one play, 
and then you can really branch out so that wham is definitely what you want to get going and get established out of this formation now something to note if you flip the wham if you run the wham to the opposite side of your quarterback's dominant hand so in this case to the left side of teddy bridgewater you might have noticed right there you can go ahead and look at it that the handoff was a little slower uh, than it is on the right side and that's something that's common throughout the game you know under center hb dives or like hb slams are much quicker to the dominant side of the quarterback so that's definitely something to keep in mind you'll probably have more success running the hb wham you know to that right side unless you're using say like michael vick and mutt then maybe you want to run it you know to the left side a little more get that quick off or that quick handoff motion going and you know hit the hole just you know, a fraction of a second quicker can make a big difference. But the complementary run to the HB Wham right here, the HB Stretch, so pretty simple. I just kind of go to the outside if your opponent starts pinching their line or wherever the defense looks weak at right there. Truck a guy, get in the end zone with Latavius Murray. What you can do is you can go ahead and motion the backside tight end to kind of mimic that HB Wham motion just to kind of keep your opponent off guard if you want to go ahead and do that as like a little wrinkle I saw Big Gene doing it in the Philly tournament. Pretty smart. And so um, that's kind of your run game with the HB Wham and the HB Stretch 1-2 Punch. Now passing game right there, you saw me run bench with the corner route from Stephon Diggs against man-to-man. -man. But once again, simple game of high lows with bench. Same same exact concept as corner strike, really. Um, you're just reading this guy right here. He drops back to guard the corner. Or essentially, he doesn't even have to drop back to guard the corner. If he's, you know, a moderate amount behind, because I could probably hit the corner or the out route right here, but if he's, you know, five yards behind my out route, I'm just going to go ahead and throw the out route unless I need the yardage. And so that's all you really need to look for is not, not you know, is he guarding the corner, but basically is he not in a good position to guard this out route? If not, go ahead and hit the out route right there uh, to Kendricks, get upfield, Pro tip, sub in the middle linebacker for a tight end spot uh, if you're playing regs. Um, so that's pretty funny. But right here, tight end angle. This is kind of a play, just backside flood right here. Drag coming from the weak side to kind of fill in the flat. And you have a corner and a clear out streak. Uh, essentially the same concept I showed you guys from doubles north right there. Uh, out of that tight end angle. That corner route can be fickle. can be pretty hard to stop. You see how quickly Stephon Diggs can run it. It's a lot like that corner route from Mesh, like I was talking about from Gun Bunch Week, where it's a pretty deep corner. gets behind a lot of like cloud flats and curl flats, but you can cut it off from the deep zones. So it can be kind of difficult to stop um, if your opponent's having a tough time, you know, getting defenders out there. Now, last but not least right here, PA misdirection. And essentially kind of the same thing, you know, flood, flat zone, or a flat route, a corner route, and then you have a backside post route. So very similar to slot corner out of doubles north here. And uh, you go ahead, just make a read right there. Could have hit the flat right there. Decided to go ahead and hit the backside post. And, you know, it's just a numbers game. High low uh, with the flat route, corner route concept right here. Once again, you know, flat route wide open. Probably could have hit the backside post right there. Once again, if you're going to hit the backside post, just be wary of any, you know, 91 zone defenders that your opponent might have out there. Uh, you don't want to throw into them and get picked off. Basically, it looks like it's a good read, but it ends up not being one. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. That was, I tried to make it pretty quick, but it ended up being about 19 minutes, it looks like. Uh, so, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. To recap, number one, Gun Bunch Week out of the West Coast Playbook. Number two, single back doubles north also out of the west coast playbook and number three single back deuce close right there i was in atlanta playbook but essentially any playbook that also that has the wham as well as the stretch should pretty much work almost all the deuce closes have the wham uh, you want to find one i think with the stretch as well and then most of those playbooks that have the wham and the stretch will also have you know complementary passing plays whether it's you know bench pa misdirection tight end angle stuff like that that single back deuce close definitely a run first formation those passing plays aren't designed to you know be run every play or get chunks like the ones that have gun bunch week are uh, it's definitely a run first formation and you pass to basically keep them honest and keep them from putting you know 10 guys in the box against your run but hope you guys enjoyed this video definitely comment let me know what you guys thought let me know what i can do better for future videos guys once again happy thanksgiving hope everybody enjoys their day and until next time guys take it easy